independence is not a mask. It could be, but here I'm talking about independence, not as a mask behind behind which you're hiding, behind which you don't dare to show your vulnerability or a mask you put on to not show the longing of your heart, what you really want. It's not a mask behind which you're hiding your fears. Independence is very tightly related to the self-confidence. It's taking responsibility for who you are and for how you live your life. This is independence. This is moving away from the victim, a victim role, and really take the pilot seat of your life. This is independence. This is having a life that you adore and having meaningful activities that make you passionate about each day. Independence could be related to the job you love and or to hobbies that appeal to your creativity and to your emotions. It's about having financial stability and here I'm not talking about wealth, I'm not talking about, you know, certain levels of, of um, a lifestyle, I'm more talking about your physical survival is taken care of, you don't need to think about food or shelter or, you know, and everybody has their own lifestyle, they are comfortable with it or not, but as long as you don't think about your physical survival, you don't have financial issues, debts, and, you know, you're not thinking, how am I going to make this month and stuff like that, this is the level I'm talking about. So financially, you're comfortable. You don't need to be rich. It's just that you're comfortable where you are and you don't depend on other people to survive. What else is independence? This is about having good people in your life, people who share similar values as yours, having interesting friends uh, and spending time with your friends, but also being comfortable spending time by yourself. And not independence is also not relying on one person, whether this is a friend or your partner, your lover or your child to entertain you and to give meaning to your life. Basically, you are on the pilot seat of your life you decide who you are, how you live your life, and and you're passionate about this life. This is independence. Then if your life is vibrant and interesting, everyone will be flattered to be part of it. And you can be much more selective about who you will get to spend time with. Because, again, you don't depend on this one girlfriend to call you and go do shopping together because you can, you're comfortable doing this by yourself. You have other friends you can do it. And, uh, yeah, basically, you can change activities. You have interesting life. And, um, yes, you do things which you're passionate about. Your social life is interesting. And even if you're a mom and you stay at home a lot... That's okay as well, as long as you get fulfillment out of who you are, what you do, you're passionate about it, and you don't depend on, on one person or a cir single circumstances in your life. You make your choices, you're comfortable with them, and you take responsibilities for the consequences of those choices. So how do you become independent? It's an exercise here. I have just one exercise for you. Get on the pilot seat of your life and take responsibility for who you are, what you do, and how you live. My invitation here is the following. Take a pen and paper and write down those categories which I'm going to mention now. You can put... You can pause the training or you can also look in the notes under the training. I put those categories there. You can copy them from there. But I would like you to write down these categories 
This is the first part. I will continue after that. So the categories are health and fitness, work, career, or business, whatever it applies to you, hobbies and personal development, love relationship, social life and friendships, parenting, and if you are not a parent yourself yet, Maybe a look at the relationship you have with your parents. Spiritual and or intellectual life. And this has to do with, to a certain extent, your personal development. But also with what you're feeding your mind with. What you are thinking about. What type of books you are reading. How you are enriching your life. How you are staying relevant like knowing what is going on in your fields of interest, for example. So spiritual and intellectual life is really about your, your thoughts, your, how you develop your mental capacities. Financial life, I already talked about the financial life. Quality of life. And quality of life is everything. Basically, it's about your lifestyle, about the type of food you eat, uh, about the type or amount of sleep you have. So all the other categories are part of quality of life. This is like a more generic category. And the last category is character. And it's not last for some deep reason it's just i will need it for the next part of what is a high value woman so i put character at the end but character is who you are like what qualities you possess and whether you come from them when you interact with others and with the world so those categories are like let's say a summary of different areas of your life, maybe the most important areas. So you write them down and then the next thing is score them, look at them and give them a number from 1 to 10 on how happy you are in each of those categories. And the only criteria to score certain number, certain score, is how you feel about them. Not how somebody else feels. Not, you know, like a simple example in the category work, career, business. Maybe you're a cleaning lady. And many people might think that, oh, this, this is a low-paid job. Um, it's uh, it's a whatever, a job in service of others. Um and you can easily score low on it. But if you, as a cleaning lady, you're happy with it, you feel fulfillment, then you don't, you score 8 or you score 9 or you score 10. So the score is 1 to 10 where 1 is low and 10 is high. And you look into how happy am I in this category? How happy I am with my health and fitness? How happy am I with my work, career, business? How happy am I with my hobbies and personal development, like my growth, with my love relationship, with my social life and friendships, with my parenting, me as a mom or me and my own parents and our relationship? How is my spiritual and intellectual life and how happy am I there? How happy am I with the quality of my life overall? I like got all those categories. And how happy am I with my character, with who I am as a person, and how I interact with the world? You score from 1 to 10 on how happy you are. And then you pick up the category, you score the lowest score. Because this means that this is the category you're least happy with. And you start improving it. You start, you take action to improve it. 
I'll give you examples. You scored very low on health and fitness because you love to eat a lot of sugar and processed food and junk food and you don't exercise and you scored three or four on this category and you have pain here, ache there. So, okay, you start by adding a little bit of movement to your day and replacing one meal with a more quality meal. You know, you start with small steps and then you do this for a few weeks and then you add something else, like you change a second meal with a more quality, high quality meal or better food or you remove a little bit of the uh, sodas or cookies you are taking or something. Then if it's your work, career or business you are not happy with, what would make you happy? What steps do you need to take to find more fulfillment in your work? Is it changes which you need to make yourself in your current environment or are you going to look for a new job? But basically you take steps on improving this. Hobby and personal development. Do you have hobbies? If you don't, what what would you like to do? Try gardening, creating pots, go dancing, try yoga, uh, origami, something with your hands, something with your like um, like language, learn a language or whatever it is, personal development and hobbies. What would make you happy? What do you would feel you help your creativity or your personal development? Love relationship. Are you happy in your love relationship? If not, what can you do to improve it? Maybe read a book about it or get a coach. Or if you're single, how do you get in a relationship? If you want to have that, start dating. And basically you make a plan for each of those. And parenting, like there are amazing books for parenting and, and teachers. Just start researching the area which you would like to improve. If it's financial life, okay, how do I get my financials in order? How do I clear my debt? How do I start building wealth? Or how do I, um, you know, like spend less so that I have more to, um, to save or to feel comfortable or something like that. So all this. This is the exercise. This is the independence. This is about really getting on the pilot seat and getting your life together. Taking responsibility for each area of your life because each of us has a lot of a lot of power into how we live our life, but often we leave it on the table. And this is my invitation for you to how do you want to live your life? And this is the moment to start living this life.